Today we're going to be looking at the latest iteration of Jules's flagship midsize model, the Day Plus. This is an exciting model for us, both because Jules has shown themselves to be a very technically competent manufacturer, but also simply because the Day Plus is a mid-sized reversible seat four-wheel swivel wheel model, and despite the huge demand for strollers of this sort, the number of models that are actually worth purchasing in this category are very few in my opinion. Early versions of the Day were a little bit of a mixed bag. Built strong, but with a few problems, related primarily to the original folding setup and the connection point between the frame and the chassis. But a lot has improved over the years, leading to this latest model. So let's get started, as usual, beginning with some stats. The Day Plus clocks in at 12.5 kilos and folds down to 95 by 58 by 42 centimeters with the seat attached. It can take up to 22 kilos in the seat and 5 kilos in the underslung shopping basket. As far as the Day Plus's seat is concerned, the dimensions are decent, having slightly above average clearance for the legs, with the leg rest fully extended, and the model will comfortably accommodate a child at least up until around 3.5 or 4 years old. The mechanism used for the extendable leg rest is quite nice, both in relation to how it looks in my opinion, though this is subjective, but also mechanically, as the telescopic design is a lot more robust than the hinged mechanisms often employed on comparable models. The Day Plus's seat is also relatively high positioned, as far as mid-size models go, making it both easier to attend to your child as well as providing easier access to the shopping basket. Though I'm for the most part pleased with the seat and bassinet on this model, the textiles are of good quality and are pretty easy to mount and remove, I do wish that the baseboards of both the bassinet and the seat had been built with wood as opposed to composite material. But then I suppose this choice of materials might be a result of Jules's recycling efforts. As far as sun coverage is concerned, the Day Plus has a pretty long sun flap, but doesn't include the more common setup of having an extra extendable portion zipped into the rear of the canopy. When it comes to other aspects of functionality, all the activation mechanisms on the model are pretty comfortable to use, which is an improvement, as sometimes in the past I felt that the triggers and mechanisms on Jules models seem to require a tad more force than with competing brands. The two most noticeable differences in this regard are with the buttons responsible for removing the seat frame and the manner with which the model is folded, which both now feel a tad more ergonomic. When looking at the variety of functions on the Day Plus, it's important to realize that Jules engineers their models a little differently than most manufacturers, and that their focus is aimed towards simplicity and longevity as opposed to offering a wide plethora of fancy functions. In other words, there's a certain minimalism at work here, the inclusion only of functions that you really need and will find particularly useful. I'm not saying that there are no fanciful extras, but that those they choose, such as the lead lights on the front and rear frames or the double ventilation on the bassinet, are inclusions that can be accomplished without filling up the internal bars of the main chassis with fragile and complicated components, whose malfunction might compromise your use of the stroller in the long run. The way the Day Plus folds is a good example of this, involving as few mechanisms as possible and avoiding elements like memory buttons, a collapsible seat, or a one-hand fold, all of which add fragile complexity that often causes problems on competing models. The Day series even takes it a step further than you might think, however, in that the chassis doesn't even lock when folded, unless you live in Australia, in which case you get the same sort of strap for holding the model closed that is found on the hub. This has actually been a pretty radical decision for Jules, and I applaud them for pushing the envelope in this respect, as it has allowed them to build the folding system a lot simpler. A last area to discuss with relation to functionality is driving, and overall the Day Plus has the same urban and light suburban focus as the rest of their line. It'll handle cobblestones, gravel, and smoother park terrain just fine, but beyond this, it will be difficult to drive, not because it's not sturdy enough or has insufficient suspension, but rather as a result of its front wheel size, which will quickly limit the sort of obstacles it's able to climb over in the first place. This has been a continuous theme with Jules for a while now, and I even have a pocket conspiracy theory that they do this on purpose, to limit wear. I can't know their intentions for sure, of course, but just know that as long as you stick to urban and light suburban terrain, the Day Plus will more than excel at providing smooth driving and maneuverability with minimal wear to the chassis. Okay, let's move on to the mechanics of the Day Plus then, having a look at the model from top to bottom, beginning with the handle, the folding mechanism, and the overall structure. Starting at the top then, the handle extension method on the Day Plus involves depressing a pair of metal levers on the inside facing of the handle arms, which activate a wire and peg type system, allowing the handle to be extended and shortened such that it fixes itself at varying positions. This is a very common system these days, but note that this does not make this mechanism equal in relation to sturdiness of construction across all models that function in a similar manner. Jules has a tendency to build their internal mechanisms simpler, in somewhat larger proportions, and with a higher emphasis on using metal for their components, instead of plastic, than a lot of competing manufacturers, all of which are contributing factors towards having fewer problems in the long run. Below the handle extension levers are then the actual folding mechanisms, which internally involve a chain of two steps. 
First, one pulls the triggers releasing the handle, and second, once the handle has rotated low enough, a second locking point is released, allowing the rear and front frames to fold towards each other. Despite this consecutive type design, the amount of internal complexity needed to pull off this fold has been kept to a bare minimum, greatly increasing the longevity of the system as a whole. As a last note, a big part of why this system is unlikely to develop problems is related to the overall structure of the chassis, which, as you can see, includes a variety of very strong horizontal bars. This sort of horizontal stability is very important for keeping everything functioning smoothly, not just because the stroller won't wind up feeling loose and rickety when you're driving it, but because both folding and even handle extension often become quite fiddly on models whose designs do not include this sort of overall rigidity, which ensures that activation mechanisms and hinges are maintained at the same position and elevation on both sides of the chassis. Okay, moving on then, we're going to have a closer look at the rear frame, starting with these hefty suspension units, which again, though they do aid in absorbing a lot of shocks from uneven terrain and make it easier to tilt the model backwards to get up and over curbs, are hampered in fulfilling their full potential by the size limitations of the Day Plus's front wheels. Still though, provided one sticks to easier terrain, they do definitely contribute to a smoother driving experience. Moving on to the brake system, the Day Plus uses a rotation-based design preferable to a wire-based system, both for its simple robustness and resistance to wear. When it comes to the wheels themselves, Jules uses a pretty strong rubberized foam in lieu of tires. As far as the locking mechanisms for the rear wheels are concerned, they are contained within the axles, which is actually a common setup among several brands that I admire, but which can result in problems if one overloads the weight capacity of the stroller for prolonged periods of time, and the axles bend as a result. On the other hand, the advantage of having the locking mechanisms included within the rear wheels is of course that if problems do occur, it's a lot easier for Jules to just send you a new set of wheels rather than repairing or replacing the whole chassis. I'm not going to talk about the LED lights on the rear or front frames, as though they're cool of course, they're not a major reason for buying the model in my opinion, just a nifty extra, like cup holders and stuff. Okay, we'll finish off then as usual by having a look at the front frame, where, other than the fact that I would have liked an extra couple of centimeters in diameter on the wheels, the mechanics have again been executed pretty flawlessly. And while I'm generally skeptical of flip-flop friendly activation systems on swivel locks, they're actually quite nice on this model, both because locking the wheels is a necessary part of the fold, the angle of the front forks are designed to accommodate the standing fold, and also as a means of protecting the rubberized foam of the front wheels during storage. One of the interesting choices with the front frame of the Day Plus is that the axles are a part of the chassis, rather than the wheel forks, which, as with the rear wheels, places the locking system within the wheel forks and makes it easier for jewels to replace components, should any problems occur down the road. Not that there is anything about the wheel forks that is suggestive of problems, mind you. Both the suspension and the locking mechanisms themselves are also built in a very sturdy manner. So, would I recommend buying the Jewels Day Plus? Yes, absolutely. The Day Plus will be ideal if you live in urban and light suburban settings and are looking for a strong mid-sized stroller that you will actually need daily as a tool for transportation and as an all-day base of operations without having to worry about a lot of potential mechanical problems. Other than the LED lights and the cool telescopic leg rest, there are not a lot of extra bells and whistles on this model. But what you get instead is a stroller that's built to last, designed by a company confident enough in their product that they offer a lifetime warranty. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe as it helps us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.